So we're going to convene a meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee. I think just Mr. Sayers. All right. Very good. Welcome. All right. Our first item this evening is JNI 772 14 Interscholastic Football and Lacrosse Equipment. Yes, this is a contract modification to provide for the continued reconditioning of interscholastic football and lacrosse equipment, which, i.e., helmets for the Office of Athletics. Approval is requested to extend the contract for term for a two year, one month period with one recommended bidder and to increase spending authority by $60,000, bringing total contract authority to $360,000. Questions? Mr. Yolfoner. George, do we have, a, do we have any type of uh, program to actually replace helmets, or are we always reconditioning helmets? Well, we have a separate contract when they cannot be reconditioned so that they can be uh, purchased. Okay. And that's in the school's online catalog. Thank you. Okay. Are we confident that the efficacy of the helmets is the same if we recondition them and if we buy new, the newest, latest technology? Uh, I don't know if Ms. Dr. Adams is here with. Good evening. Uh, so um, the reconditioning brings the helmets back up to safety standards. Often um, schools send helmets to be reconditioned, and then we find out that some of them cannot be reconditioned, so we replace them. So they're only reconditioned if they can be, is there and if they can be brought, up back, brought back up to standard. Is there somebody responsible for, or is there a point in time at which we analyze the latest technology and say that we'd like to move forward with a different type of helmet because it's a better helmet? It's a great question. So the helmets actually have a, a life of 10 years at maximum that we could use them even if we were able to recondition them every season so they have a natural um, end to their lifespan that causes us to replenish. And as Mr. Sarah said, schools often also receive budget from the Office of Athletics to replace equipment on an as-needed basis. Okay. All righty. We're going to move on to the next contract. Thank you. ARA 2-12-17, audiology equipment. This is a contract modification to provide consent to the assignment of this contract from Phonak Incorporated and Unitron Industries to Sonovo USA Incorporated. There are three other award vendors on the original contract approved by the board uh, on October 25th, 2016 that are not the subject of this reassignment. And this uh, reassignment uh, was undertaken by the Sonovo Group as part of a rebranding effort to create Sonovo USA Incorporated. Questions? Seems straightforward. <clears throat> Item three will be JNI 761-16 meeting space. Uh, this is a contract modification of a competitive proposal to provide consent to the assignment of this contract from Radisson Hotels North Baltimore to Red Lion Hotel North Baltimore as a result of a franchise agreement. There are six other award vendors on the original contract approved January 9th, 2016. And in this instance, Radisson has entered into a franchise agreement with Red Lion to operate uh, this and a number of their other properties. So this is about operation. This is not about changing the meeting space. Correct. And nor change in ownership or any other terms. Right. Okay. Questions? Moving on, item four, LKO 414.18 on-site fitness classes. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide on-site fitness classes to BCPS staff. Approval is requested for a two-year, one-month contract with one recommended award bidder and contract spending authority of $50,000. And these, uh, Expenses are uh, reimbursed under our agreement, our health care agreement with Cigna as part of our employee wellness program. 
Is this the first time that we've entered into We had now? one prior year of services. Um, I'm not sure it was the same vendor. Um, Okay. Yes, it was the same vendor. So our experience was a good one with this vendor? Yes, it was. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That's one of the reasons we did the bid because we wanted to make sure we had that it trained certified instructors. <clears throat> Are we relatively confident that $50,000 is going to be sufficient to cover our thousands and thousands of staff and administrators? Well, and so it did grow this year, so we, which is a good thing. We'd like to see more of our staff involved. But unless everybody decides to get physically fit, I think we're in a pretty good place with the amount. Okay. Questions? Okay. Item 5, JMI 621.18, Workload Automation Software. Thank you. Uh, this is a new cooperative contract to purchase or to provide uh, the purchase of ongoing maintenance and support for the ASG Xena distributed workload management and process automation software for business management information systems. We're requesting approval of a nine-year, four-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $340,782. Okay, questions? Ms. Causey. Thank you. So I see that on this contract, it's um, we only received one vendor requesting solicitation? Uh, no, in this case, uh, we have been using this product since 2009. And uh, we purchased a uh, license at that time. And this is, uh, we're using the uh, Maryland statewide contract for software to uh, provide an additional nine years and four months of maintenance, uh, annual maintenance fees for the existing licenses that we use. So when you talk about maintenance for the software, that's updates. Updates, uh, troubleshooting, customer support, etc. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. How does this technology relate, if at all, to the um, new technology? I think that we're acquiring as it relates to performance. Well, management? we we will use it with our ERP system as well as our Chronos timekeeping system and other uh, software that we operate. It's a basically a scheduler, so that we can run jobs on a 24-hour cycle, uh, take advantage of, you know, downtime to schedule work uh, and optimize the efficiency of the systems. All right, questions? All right, number six, JMI 61918, Microsoft Software Solutions. Okay, this is also a, comp a cooperative contract with uh, the Maryland Education Enterprise Consortium, the State Education Consortium for Technology that will provide Microsoft server and desktop software applications. Approvals requested for a five-year, two-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $3,585,600. Questions? Ms. Gossie. Thank you. Mr. Saris, we have a, a number of other Microsoft applications that we're using system-wide. How does this differentiate from those and or is it similar? And compare also the uh, procurement type for the Microsoft that we already currently use versus this one. This actually covers all of our Microsoft products that we use. <clears throat> so it is the license mechanism that we use to uh, do all of our servers, all of the SQL, all of the cloud uh, applications that we have, the Office 365, um, you name it, it's under there. The Azure, Active Directory, uh, Exchange, everything is covered under this license. Okay, so how is it different than the current contract, JMI 624-15, in terms of um our procurement type. It's exactly the same. Okay, thank you. No problem. Ms. Head? 
Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Um, one of the bullets says pricing is based only on the total number of high school students and the total number of teachers. Yes, sir. But licenses are available for all students. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, the way that the consortium has modeled the licensing mm -hmm. is based strictly on the high school student count, but the licenses are uh, spread across the entire district. So when we put in the numbers, we put in for 115,000 licenses per year. So again, it's just the way the modeling is based upon the negotiation with the contractors. So through the consortium, are we then getting the other licenses donated or how is that? They're, they're rolled into that pricing. So when we do a true up, the pricing, pricing license model that they give to us, we have to just indicate how many um, high school students and how many teachers we're licensing. But then when we go and fill out the actual true up in the form for the licenses, we indicate where our total student population is, as well as our total number of employees. Do you know, is that a tax benefit to Microsoft? Or is that considered a comp or donation of the? the no, it's just, the it's just the way it's been negotiated as part of the contract. Interesting, but the license, the access to the tools is the same for all student licenses. Yes, ma'am. High school students aren't receiving any other. Yes, ma'am. Great, thank no you. No problem. Does this involve the purchase of equipment, particularly servers, or is this only about licenses? This is licensing only. So when it when we say we're licensing servers, is it licensing server space, or is it? No, we're actually licensing the license. We're 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 procuring the license to run that server, to run that software. It's not the physical. It's just the software side. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. So is this any different in terms of the quantity of high school? licenses given that we didn't have one-to-one -one devices this school year but we will have them in the coming school year no ma'am that this license has been the same for the last five years so again it's always been based on the high school students okay great thank you mm -hmm. okay we will move on thank you for your time jbo 72318 beverages and vending machines this is a new competitively bid contract for beverages and vending machines for secondary schools for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a five-year, one-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $3,125,000. Okay, questions? So why only two bids received out of 17 requests and solicitation? Um, well, I don't know if we have any feedback on this one. Uh, typically, we do get responses as to why. Right. Uh, let me see if I have any information. Maybe difficulty in complying with the smart snacks in school protocol? I don't know. Uh, is Jamika or Melanie have any information on that? Negotiating back here. Okay. We did have some other vendors provide bids, but the products were not vendable, so we had to disqualify those vendors. So the vendors were offering products, but not the vending component. Correct. Okay. Okay. We'll move on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. ARA 218.18, on-call inspection and so forth. Yes, this is a new competitively bid contract for the inspection, maintenance, repair, and installation of physical education facilities and equipment for the Office of Facilities Support Services. Approval is requested for a five-year, one-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $570,000. Uh, the average annual expenditures for the, contra the previous contract were about $88,000, and therefore the total contract expenditures to date since the uh, beginning of the previous contract was $512,000. This includes all fixed as well as non-fixed equipment. So the inspections, the maintenance and repairs will be in the main gymnasium, weight rooms, dance rooms, and exercise rooms. The types of equipment that will be looked at, and I'll just briefly, because there's about 30 or 40 of them, 
uh, belts, poles, balancing beams, chinning bars, basketball backs, stops, and all appurtenances, pulley weights, table tennis tables, volleyball floor sleeves, etc. But not helmets, apparently. But not helmets. Okay. Just from a macro point of view, how do we kind of understand why helmets might be excluded or done specifically? What other items would be addressed specifically outside of a contract, an omnibus contract like this? That's a good question. I'm not really sure of the answer. Um, I hadn't really thought of helmets as uh, fixed, uh, fixed or non-fixed equipment. Um, th this wouldn't be uniforms. This wouldn't be paraphernalia. It would only be the stuff within the gymnasium, the exercise equipment that would be, that would be inspected and then evaluated and repaired if needed. Okay. This is, these tend to be installed items rather than supply type mm. items. So when we say non-fixed, we might mean weights that have a place in, within the facility, just, okay. Yes. All right, item nine. JMI 62018, electrical installations, et cetera. Yes, this is a new time and materials contract for which competitive bids were solicited to provide on-call electrical services for the offices of facility support services and facilities construction and improvement. Approval is requested for a five-year, one-month contract with 14 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $5.5 million. Um, the bidders are shown in the recommended award to list and approximately 9% um, of the funds were used in the capital budget program and about 91 were used from operating. Uh, the total expenditure on the previous contract was just slightly over five or just under $5.1 million with an average annual of about $1 million per year. So you're not saying that we have discretion as to which fund to use capital or operating, it's just that that's where the project where, fell. Where the need is, correct. Where the need is. Is this consistent with past spending? Yes. Uh, we've increased it over the next five years uh, about 10%. Okay. <clears throat> Other questions? Ms. Head? Thank you. Do we know of the total lifetime expenditures, how or what percentage was spent on schools that are currently on the capital plan for renovation or replacement? Mostly um, the types of stuff that this is used for is uh, kind of immediate needs. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, it's uh, used to hook up relocatables. Uh, it's used for uh, maintenance, repair and replacement of exterior lights and for some interior lights that crews can't get to. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's for any work that's beyond the capability of the crews that we have on staff. And um, they contact, that, that office, Facility Support Services, will always contact my office to find out exactly what's going on at that particular school to make sure that they're, number one, not interfering with what we're doing or that we're not interfering with what they need to do. And on an emergency basis, so it, potentially it, well, the issue at Delaney High with the electrical work that was performed, would that be an example? It of might be an example. I don't know whether or not this contract was used for that specifically, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it'd be that kind of thing that they would be utilized for. So we don't know what, what percentage or allocation would be for schools who have other capital needs that are currently on the schedule? Not at the moment, no. It would be useful for us to understand what our operating expenditures are in relation to capital needs. Um, yeah, I think the question basis. probably needs to be refined, though, Julie, as far as the what is actually being requested, what information in particular, because I, I interpret it rather broadly, uh, mm -hmm. what proportion of spending are related to kind of our worst facilities, it sounds like maybe you're asking. Yes, so that we make sure that we are prioritizing our capital projects, um, not are you solely saying, on this basis, but that we understand what our ongoing operational costs are. Are you saying that a contract like this and its expenditures is germane to identifying which of our facilities rank lowest in quality? Yes. Okay. Can we get an understanding, perhaps in a weekly update, of spending relating to this contract in our worst facilities? Absolutely. I'd, weekly might be a bit much, but we'll, we'll no, certainly no, uh, give you a... In a weekly update. Oh, I see. <laughs> we're particular. We're not that particular. Uh, okay. Other questions, Ms. Causey? Just to dovetail with uh, Ms. Hen, in terms of what 
the major categories of the types of um, repairs or um, hookup hookup for the relocatables is not a repair. That's a structured planned facility change. Um, but that would come under the operating budget piece, Correct. not the capital piece. Correct. Um, but also to see which schools are they going to. The, the use that uh, facilities construction and improvement puts them to is typically uh, when we get a special project request where uh, a school wants to add a, a TV or they want to do something that may impact the electrical service, um, that's typically where we would then give them the, the list of contractors and the school would use that uh, and capital funds would be used uh, as well. So <clears throat> it's usually the smaller projects that we would use this contract for. Now facilities support services, the maintenance office, would use this for the larger stuff that, uh, like relocatables or like interior exterior lighting, if, if uh, lights are going out and they can't reach those particular lights or they need to upgrade the lights and revise the poles, um, then they would end up use, using this contract in order to put those new lights up. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think we are on item 10, MBU 518.18, parking lot improvements at Hernwood. This is a new construction contract for which competitive bids were solicited to provide additional parking and reconstruct existing paving areas at Hernwood Elementary School. Bids were received and approval is requested for a contract with the lowest responsive responsible bidder with a contract spending authority of $1,403,887. Uh, it would provide a student drop-off area and additional parking spaces. Uh, it would reconstruct the existing parking lot and bus loop, and all of them would be ADA compliant. Uh, to give you an example, the existing parking spaces currently at Hernwood is 54. Uh, when the project will be complete prior to school start of this coming year, there will be 119 parking spaces, and five of them will be ADA compliant. And so there was no student drop-off space before? That's correct. Okay. Is that because the school is primarily walking? Uh, it's... <sighs> Many of our elementary schools were designed as community schools over the last 70 or so years, and many of them do not have a formal drop-off area or pickup area um, for the driving community, and a lot of students are driven now. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of our elementary schools don't have a formal spaces unless we've built it in the last, say, 10 years or so. Ms. Gauzy? I'm curious when I saw the comment that it will be in compliance with the American with Disabilities Act. Is it currently in compliance? Um, it, it is from the sense that there are uh, ramps and that people have access. Um, to be in compliance, um, you have to be accessible. Um, the school has to be accessible. When we get done with it, it'll be completely accessible. The entire parking area will be accessible to people with handicaps. And isn't it the sort of thing where the codes change from year to year? So what was formerly ADA compliant right. might not be Correct. current. And so you'll need to do updates to the current code. Exactly. Okay, great. Thank you very much. That'll be great. Item 11, more parking lots at Overly High School this time. Correct. This is a new construction contract for which competitive bids were solicited to overlay the existing parking lot and reconstruct the existing service driveway and walkways down to the athletic fields at Overly High School. Bids were received and approval is requested for a contract with the lowest responsive responsible bidder with a contract spending authority of $1,140,629. It includes um, lighting installation along the, the, the walkways in the rear of the school. You may recall that last year we did phase one which was all of the parking area in the very front of the school. Now we're going over to the areas from the office over to the auditorium, and then with the walkways behind the school as well. So this one also includes lighting? There is some lighting fixture replacement. I believe we're replacing 10 existing light poles, and we're also adding 11 new light poles. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, Ms. 
And all the, are the new light fixtures all um, high performing energy conservation, the LEDs? We're pretty much putting LED everywhere where we're putting them in now. That's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, number 12 and finally, LKO 423.18 auditing services. Uh, this is a new contract to provide auditing services for the Board of Education of Baltimore County. Approval is requested for a one-year, one-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $413,550. Board members, may I suggest that we might move this to the full board for its discussion and consideration in full? Do I have, do I have a motion to do that? So moved. Great. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Great. Aye. We, we will do that. We will postpone our discussion for the benefit of the full board. Thank you. All right, so before we conclude our work, do I have a motion for the board to recommend items 1 through 11 to the full board for its approval while uh, taking no recommendation on item 12? So moved. Great. Second. Great. All in favor, just say aye. Aye. Great. That's what we'll do. Uh, that concludes our work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.